<laughs> no, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Father God, we come before you tonight. We thank and praise you for being who you are in our lives. God, we continue to just call upon the name of Jesus, oh God, in the situations that we face from day to day. We know, God, that you are in control and that you will take care of all things, oh God. We come before you lifting up unsaved loved ones, oh God, family and friends, as we do daily, God. We just ask and pray that you would move by your spirit on their behalf, oh God, and that they will make that decision, God, to follow after you. Father, just continue to move by your spirit in Jesus' name. We pray, oh God, for the widows in, in this area, God, and thank God for those that are pro providing assistance for them, God, and just ask you to continue to touch their hearts and continue to do what needs to be done on their behalf in Jesus' name. And God, we continue to lift up Michael Griffin to you, God. We just ask and pray that you would touch his body. Father, he's in your control, God. Everything is in your hands. And so we just pray that your will will be done in, in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. God, all the things that's taking place there and in other countries now that may soon be drawn in, God, we just ask and pray, Father, that you would move in the midst. We continue to lift up Father President Putin and continue to pray that his heart be changed. God, that he will humble himself and, and just recognize, God, who he is, God. I just pray that you would just move by your spirit. Father, we continue to pray for those that's traveling to and fro, safe travel and mercies, God. Father, over the dangerous highways in the air on the ground, as well as on the ground, that you will continue to move by your spirit. Father, we pray for Brother Dave's mother-in-law. We continue to pray and lift her up as she's in the hospital, God. And we just ask and pray that you will continue to move by your spirit upon her. We know, God, that you are our healer. We trust and believe in you, God, that you're working all things out for the good. We continue to lift up Brother Rick's mother-in-law, God, and thank you for the progress that she's making, God, able to, to walk on a walk with the walker, God. But I thank and praise that she's up and about. And I just ask you to continue to move by your spirit within her body, God. Father, we continue to lift up missionary chips god don't know the situation right now but we just continue to pray that healing takes place within him father and continue to pray for his wife's comfort as well as she to provide support unto him we just ask complete for complete healing in jesus name father for we know that the deal with backs and necks and all those things so we just ask and pray god that you move by your spirit because you're the one that created us and you know everything about us so have your way in, in the midst continue to lift up oh god sister young me Tyler to you. I lifted my wife, Sister Brown, to you, Sister Chase Sook to you, God. Just ask that you touch their bodies, continue to manifest healing within them. God, we know that you're well able to do just that, that you're able to manifest it within them as you are able to do it in all of us. And we continue to pray, Father God, for those in the midst of the exercise the next week and a half or so, God, we just ask and pray that all goes well with this exercise or this event. And we just pray, Father, that all will be well and they'll accomplish what they have set out to do. God, that everything will be just fine in Jesus' name. And Father, we continue to pray for office environments, the atmosphere, God. We know that these things can be changed, God. So that just ask that you touch the hearts of, of those in this in the office environment, God. They can come in and work in a harmonious uh, relationship, one with another, in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Brother Rob and Sister Pam's uh, niece, Shirley. We lift her up before you right now, God. And we know what doctors have said, but we know you to be the great I am. You are able to do all things but fail. You are able to do the impossible things. And so, God, we just give her over to you. We, we cast that care upon you, for we know that your word says that you care it for us. And so, God, I just ask and pray that your will will be done in Jesus' name. I pray for their encouragement and for their comfort and peace in, in Jesus' name. God, we continue to pray for pastors in the, in the local area as well as pastors around the world, God, that the things that they encounter and go through from day to day. Father, I pray their strength in the Lord. I pray that you would give them uh rest in their, in their physical bodies as well when they lie down to sleep, God. You would just touch them and let them know that you are available to them as well, God. Continue to pray that we come together and accomplish that which you sent us here to do, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for uh, Brother Day's uh, son-in-law, healing taking place in his neck, God, and we just pray right now for his office environment, Father, that you would move by your spirit within him and, and just continue to, to show yourself strong, God, and whatever's being said and done, God, we pray that justice shall prevail in Jesus' name. God, we look to Sister Fontenot's uh, daughter, Keisha, and her husband, Father. They make their move. We just ask and pray to watch over them. And thank you, Father, for opening that door of opportunity for them to be able to go forth. And we pray for their success as they go forth into a, a new environment, God. And we just ask that you would have your way within them. And I pray right now, Father, for all that are on, online right now, for those that are here with us here in the sanctuary, we just ask and pray that you have your way in us even the more. God, as we put our trust, our faith, and belief in you, and we just go forth in action. God, that you would have your way. And I just thank and praise you, God, that things can change, Father, as we continue to pray, and as we continue to look to you to, to move in Jesus' name, Father. We, we ask these things in your name. And again, I thank you for answered prayers. God, for your word tells us that you hear the effects for fervent prayers of the righteous and that they availeth much. We thank you, God, that we've seen results of, of prayer. 
prayer is being answered, God. And I just thank you for, for what you're doing in our midst and how you're moving by your spirit. I lift up our nation to you tonight, God, and all the nations around the world. Father, we just pray that they come to know you as Lord and Savior and realize that they need you in their lives, especially in the decisions that they make each and every day. Father, I just pray that they can put aside personal preference and political parties or whatever, God, and just begin to do what's right for the people in Jesus' name, that we would consider all people, God, that you, would, that you would have your way in the midst. And Father, continue to lift up Brother Miller, ask that you touch his back, God, and Father, just manifest healing within him. We know you to be the healer, the great I am, that you can do all things. And so we just continue to trust and believe in you. Have your will, God, as we go to our time of study tonight. Father, it, it, it talked about the testimonies of prayers. Father, prayers being answered. We thank you and praise that prayers are still being answered, God, and we know that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, and that you never change, God, and so we just pray that we come in line with your word and just allow you to do the things that you do. We pray for all of our children, God, for our grandchildren. We just ask that you would have your way in the midst, and God, I lift up our son-in-law to you, God, tonight, and just ask you to continue to move by your spirit within his life, God, in, in Jesus' name. I pray for Linda. She prepares to to go TDY, just ask and pray that you watch over her in the air as well as on the ground to accomplish that, that she needs to do. And again, we just thank you and praise you for all that you do. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Again, we thank and praise God for, for each one of you and uh, to take the time out to tune in and, and for God to have his way. And as we've been saying for the last few weeks, um, the prayer changes things. And I truly believe that that God is moving by his spirit, that he's working things out for our good. And, uh, and as I said, prayers are still going forth and God is still answering. And so all we gotta do is, is to go to him, whatever uh, care, weight, anxiety, worries, whatever you have, we need to cast on him because he is big enough and he can show to all of our problems at the same time. And, uh, and so we just realize just how big our God is and that he will see us through the things that we face and go through. And so I just thank him and praise him that he is who he says, he is. We can trust him at his word. And again, he continues to move in our midst and on our behalf. And so it's not going to go just a little further, skip down through some of these prayers. And uh, again, one of the things I want to make mention of is, is God's mercy. You know, it, it, he great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every day. And, uh, and just trusting and believing in him that he's able to turn things around and do in us what needs to be done. And uh, when we pray by faith, believing, that says something. What that says is that we have the belief that God is going to move and that we have this expectation that God is going to move. So when we, we pray to him by faith, believing we await the manifestation. We wait on the Lord, which means that we don't try to go out there and do it on our, on our own. If, if we're giving it to God, understand that God is going to take it and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna deal with it. And so we can take our hands off of it and allow him to have his, his way. And when we do that, God moves in the midst. And so I thank him and praise him. Even if we have walked away from him, that we can go back to him. He says he's married to, to the backslide. You know, so even if things are not right in, with our relationship, we can get that relationship right by going to him and, and, and putting all those things on him. He already knows everything. He sees everything. He's everywhere. And so we just have to uh, learn to trust him and, and to go forth. So there's nothing so bad that, that we've done or could do that would stop God from forgiving us if we would just give it over to him and, uh, and to seek his face. And so I, so I thank God for being a forgiving God. You know, and I, and I say this, when I talk about forgiveness, forgiveness can, unforgiveness can bring about sickness uh, in, in your physical body as well as in our spiritual relationships one with another. And many times that could be a, a, a part of the problem that we may be facing or going through. I'm not saying all the time that is the case, but I'm saying, but if, if there's something that's there, we need to make sure that we deal with it. And once it's dealt with, God deals with it. Once we give it over to him, then we can walk in the newness of life again and, and have that relationship with him again. And so I, so I thank and praise God that as we go through uh, these testimonies of, of prayer, what God is doing, you know, we should want to see God move even the more in, in our lives and on our behalf. And so I wanted to go to, uh, to this prayer tonight uh, over in Jeremiah chapter 14, 7 to 10. And uh, Jeremiah is praying here for, for mercy. And, uh, and and we know what mercy is that we don't we don't get what what we what we des what we deserve God's mercy you know and and so when he gives us his mercy he's 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 stopping those things that should be happening to us from happening things that could could be it could be worse than what they are but because of his mercy it's it's not and so I thank and praise God for that as well but in Jeremiah 14 
7 through 10, it says, O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. O the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished? and a, a mighty man that cannot save. Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Thus saith the Lord unto this people. Thus have they loved to wonder. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doeth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. And so again, we can go through the Old Testament scriptures. We can go through the New Testament scriptures. We can go into looking at our own lives and see there have been times when we have turned away and walked our own ways and did things that was not right or pleasing in the sight of the Lord. But God is merciful. God is long suffering. God hears the prayers of the righteous. And, and even when we're walking in the unrighteousness, he hears us when we come to him with a repentful spirit. You know, when we admit that we've done wrong, we admit that things have not gone the way that they should have gone had we walked in the ways of Christ. And again, we thank and praise God that he says, even in our backslides, although they be many, you know, we've sinned against him. We know, looking back in the Old Testament, New Testament, in our lives, we know that God moves. And one of the things he says is he will forgive our sin. He will put it in a sea of forgiveness, never to bring it back up again. Our sin is, is as far as, as the east is from the west. You know, he, he puts away from us. And so we sometimes bring it back up again. And I say that because when we forgive, we're supposed to let it go. You know, we don't continue to, to keep bringing it up and, and keep throwing it in a person's face. We've, they've forgiven us, we've forgiven them, and we move on. We go forward from this point. And so we need to learn to get up, walk away from it, and it's, it's done. We walk as, as new people in Christ. We're no longer in bondage, but we have been set free. And so as a result of that, we need to walk as a free people. And, uh, and, and go forth. But one of the things as I was looking at this scripture is that God is able to save us, God is able to keep us, but that does not mean that we in ourselves will sometimes walk away, go our own way, do our own thing. And when we walk away from God, we're subject to, to any attacks of the enemy. You know, the enemy's out there. He, he, we already know that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. But if we're giving him opportunity to do that, then we're wrong. We need to be seeking, seeking the face of God in order for us to be strengthened in the inner man. And so although our outward man perishes, Paul says the inward man is renewed day by day. So what that tells me is that we got to be in the word of God. We got to be praying. We got to be standing in the gap one for another because all these things are around about us. And we're only a step, a step from falling away. We're only a step from falling on our faces. But I thank and praise God each step that we take, we take a step of faith looking to him and we continue to go forward and the things of God. But, you know, we can throw stones at Israel if you, if you choose to do that. I would say don't <laughs> because we can point fingers at them, but we'd be pointing back at our own selves because we're no different than them. They went through some things. Yes, they turned their backs on, on God, but then, and some of them died in the midst of that, but then there was a remnant that God kept. And I believe there's still a remnant here today, you know, in, in, the, in, in the world today. God has some people everywhere. And so it doesn't matter what part of the world we're in. I believe God has somebody there that can share a word of us, uh, share a word with us and pray with us and stand in the gap for us as we're going through the things that we go through. And so understand you can go to, to various places around the world and you'll see things that will sometimes get our eyes off the mark. But this is why we should remain focused. And it, it's like, it's like, I almost want to say you got to be laser focused because if we're laser folks, that means we're constantly looking at one thing. You know, if we take our eyes off of that, stop focusing, and then we start looking to the left or the right, and, and we start varying. And as we start varying, there, there is the situation. Those are the things that allow the, the enemy to get us off track. And so, and, it, and the enemy, we already know it's, it's broad is the way. It's very broad, but narrow is the way that, that gets us to, to, to God. And so we got to be careful as we're on that path, that we're on the straight and narrow path. And we continue to follow God, continue to keep our eyes on him so that we don't deviate uh, to the left or the right. And then we won't be 
uh, people that would go out and, and continue to live in sin and do those things that's, that's not pleasing to God or get into a backslidden condition or uh, unforgiveness mode. You know, we don't want to be that people. We want to turn ourselves to God to seek his face and to know that he's going to be right there with us. And, and, the, and the good thing is that we know that he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. He, he, he's constantly standing by, wanting us to come to him bowing down before him, seeking his face in all things. And so it's a, it's a matter of us doing what needs to be done. God has already done his part. We're the ones that got to take this step of faith and to go to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent for what I said. I repent for what I've done. Uh, I, I'm sorry for, for not walking in the ways of, of Christ, you know, things that will bring, bring uh, dishonor to the kingdom. And when we go to him in our, in our distress, we know that God hears us. And if we know that he hears us, What's holding us back from going to him to get the relief, to get the help that we need? And so, again, we know that God hears, hears, the, hears our prayers. And so he hears our prayers and he responds and sends forth an answer. And, and it's like it's instantaneous. He's already moving by faith. You know, God is working on our behalf. And so I, so I thank and praise God that as Jeremiah was praying for mercy, you know, we should all be praying for, for God's mercy. We should all be praying for, for others, you know, that, that God won't take them out of here before they get it right with him you know we don't want anybody to, to leave this earth and not be right with god so this is you know we used to sing a song get right church and let's go home get right church you know it's things that we have to do and it starts at us it starts with the church we're the ones that got to get it right because we're the ones that are the examples for the world to see and so we want them to see christ in us we want them to recognize that god is working on our behalf and if they see god working on our behalf then they they have something they can stand on. I saw what God did for, for Brother Tracy. I saw what God did for Sister uh, Sister Joyce. I, I, I know that God can do these things. And if he can do it for them, why not? Why can he not do it for me? And you know, he, But we know him as Savior. They may not know him as Savior and Lord, which is why it's important for us to continue to, to share the word of God with those that are, that are unsaved. But, but we that are saved, we know better. We know right. We know wrong. And James talks about that, I believe it's in James chapter four, he says, to know to do right and to do wrong is sin. So, so we already know that. We know what we have to do. And when we even want to commit a sin or we even thinking about it, you know, we need to turn to God and say, God, help me. And God will make a way of an escape for us so that we don't have to go through this thing and, and, and commit the sin. You know, if we go through it, then the sin is committed. And so we wanted to, 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 to step away from that and not allow sin to overtake us in our lives. So just know that the Satan is out there to do what he's going to do. He's doing his job. We need to be doing our job and walking in the ways of God. Any, any comments or feedback? All right. Okay, let's go down to the next uh, scripture here from Matthew 6. And we all know this scripture very, very well in uh, the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we call this the, the model prayer. You know, you can pray this prayer, but also as God grows us in our spirit, man, we get more in our prayer vocabulary and we begin to pray for other things, deeper things that we may not have known of before. You know, and, and as we grow older, our prayer life uh, prospers and grows even the more. So it says, and after this matter, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever endeavor you know and i pray that prayer every every morning in addition to my regular time of prayer but i pray that because i know that that's 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 something that that god desires of us is to pray to pray to him and to give him place in our lives you know and to call upon him and uh and, and as we're praying about those things that it would be in earth as it is in heaven you know we're down here in this world but things that are, that are happening down here can be turned around as we began to seek the face of God, we want his kingdom to come and the kingdom of God is here. It's, it's here. We can, we can go forth and do the things that God is calling us to do as his people. And so when we pray, 
He says, give us this day our daily bread, meaning that we're not lacking anything. We're not, we're not missing out on, on the spiritual nu nutrition that God can give us in the midst of our prayer lives. I, I would venture to say that none of us would skip a meal, you know, I'm, and I'm talking a natural meal. In the natural, we, we get a, a meal daily unless we have to be in, doing a, a time of fasting, okay, and you may abstain from that. But, but daily, we're getting the, the, the physical food uh, of, of, of the, the world to sustain us. And so we're saying the same thing should happen in the, the spirit realm. We should be praying our daily bread, give us our daily bread so that we can go forth. And, and that's another thing that, that I, I do in, in the morning when I get up, I, I thank God for another day he's allowed me to see, he quickened me to rise up this morning. And then I say my, my prayer and then I go to my throne room and I read the daily bread. You know, and, and then it, I can think of that as I'm out doing my walk in, early in the morning, you know, and just communing with him. He, he, he hears our prayers. He hears the prayers of the righteous. And so this is who we are. We are the righteousness. Ooh, talk too fast. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as a result of what Jesus did. And so we want to commune with him. And so when we do the prayer, we're talking with God. And after we finish with the prayer, you know, prayerfully, we're allowing God to talk to us, minister to our spirit. And, and so many times we, we, you know, we, I'm not saying you are all of us, but sometimes we can, we can say a selfish prayer, Lord, bless me, bless me and, and me, you know, but he wants us to extend ourselves out and pray for others, you know, that may be worse off than we are and understand that there are people that are worse off than we are, pray for them. And, and I say that to make a plug again, as I, I do each Sunday, excuse me, with the, the Voice of the Martyrs, let's read another magazine this week. Those people are going through they're being killed, they're being tortured, they're going through. And, and one of the things that, that the voice of the martyr says in there is prayer. We can do that, we can pray, or we can su support them by sending finances to get to where it needs to go. There are things that we can do as a people, God's people, that can benefit others. And just as Brother Tyler was with me, he made mention, he says, pray, pray for the pastors. You know, and, and I thank you, Brother Tyler, for that because we all need prayer. You know, we all need stand in the need of prayer. And in regards to whether you're a Sunday school teacher, a Bible study teacher, a pastor, a minister, part of the clergy, we still need prayer. And so it's important that we pray one for another. And, and as we were thinking about, think, talking about this Sunday in the midst of uh, God's comfort, he comforts us so that we can comfort others. He deals with us in certain ways so that we know how to deal with certain things that may come our way. And so, so when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're talking to our Father, we're talking to Jesus, we're, you know, they're together. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding on our behalf. And so we thank Jesus for standing in the gap for us, and this is what we need to do. We take that as an example. Just as Jesus is standing in the gap praying, we need to be standing in the gap praying, one for another. And so that means that we need to pray for our leaders. And, and you hear us sometimes in the midst of our prayers, we say we're praying for those in positions of authority. God tells us how to pray. He is teaching us how to pray. And, and again, this is a model prayer that he has given us. This is a, a, a start or foundation, but there is more that can be added to, to this prayer as we're going forth each and every day. And there are so many things that are going on around us that we can be praying about. Now, as we started in prayer tonight, and we took the request. Yet many talked about the, the Ukraine. Many talked about family members that are sick, you know, unsaved loved ones. That's a continual thing because we're, every day there are people that are dying. And I'm not just talking about physical death. I'm talking about spiritual death, dying and not knowing who Jesus Christ is and the part of their sin. So we need to pray that daily because people are dying daily. So you can't say, well, I prayed that prayer and I never pray that again. No, 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 no. There are sick people and there's always going to be sick people. So we got to be praying constantly, continually that God will move by his spirit in, in the midst. And so we want to share with them what God is able to, to do. Just as God forgave our debts, we forgive our debtors. Just as God forgives those that trespass against us, we forgive those that trespass against us. You know, we do it the way Jesus did. And so when we do it the way Jesus did, it, understand that Jesus was not a respecter of persons. He cared for everybody, even those that tormented him, even those that crucified him at Calvary. He still cared for them. He still prayed for them. So again, it's important that we pray. And, you know, I had no idea that we would be in this this long, you know, and, and I know I'm still going fast, but there's so much 
that we can pray for. So many things that's going on around about us, our job situations, our marital relationship, uh, unforgiveness, uh, things that have happened in our lives, you know, and we're torn by some things that may have happened in our lives in time past, and it's still tormenting us. But when we pray about it and then give it over to God, God can deal with that. He can't deal with it if we're not, if we're not willing to give it up. And so when we pray, we should be praying, Lord, I'm giving this over to you. I came up in a, in a, in a household where, where I was mistreated. I came up in a household where I was always talked about and put down, and it's, it's always stayed with me, and I need to, I need to give this to you so you can take that. Whatever it is, that whatever concerns that we may have in our lives, we need to learn to give those things over to God so that God can deal with them. Because so many people have bought into what people have said about them, that they weren't going to be anything. They were always going to be a failure. And if they bought into that narrative, that can be changed when we begin to seek the face of God. And when we pray to him, humbly bowing down before him, praying and let it be made known unto him. And then he can come in and begin to work the situation out. He can take care of it if we will learn to give it over to him. And any comments in, in, on prayer? Yeah, I like what you said earlier about how the, the Our Father prayer is a, a foundational prayer. You know, it's kind of like a template that we can use to um, to, to pray to and ask for the things that we need. And, you know, it, it starts off the, the best way that we can start any prayer by praising him first for all that he's already done and then go into all the other things that we need. And, you know, by his grace and mercy, we will receive it through faith. So, you know, I, I, I really love the Our Father prayer. I definitely use it as a as a precursor before I go into my, my, my regular prayer, you know, and, uh, Sometimes I'm surprised how long I'm in prayer. There's so much, like I said, to pray for and about. Um, it, I, I get up, I'm like, wow, I've been here for that long. But, you know, time goes by, you know, communing with God, you know, you'd be surprised how, how much of a blessing that that, that, communi that direct communication is with him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> very, very important. Yeah, and I believe... If it wasn't important, he wouldn't. It, we wouldn't see so much of this as the prayers that have been prayed, uh, just through the that we've gone through in the last uh, few weeks. You know, God is, is still moving, and and this is the thing that we we really need to be aware of: that God is still moving now, in this time, in the present time. He he did what he did back then, but but he's now moving in the present now, and uh, and so when we go to him in prayer. God moves in, in the now, just as he did in the times of old, because you've heard us say many times, God doesn't change. He's the same God. And so he's able to fulfill the things today that he did back then. And it, even to a greater extent, you know, he's doing some things on our behalf. And so, I, again, I thank him and praise him for the time of prayer and, and, and the invitation just to get to know him even the more, you know, and, as we, and that's what we want people to do is to, to come to know Jesus, to come to know him. As Paul said, in the power of his resurrection to really know him. And uh, and we should want to know him more. We should want to have a deeper relationship with him. We should want to, to be uh, have a more intimate relationship with him. And when you think about that word intimate, for those that are married, have been married, you know, you know, I'm not just talking, I'm not saying intimate just from a, a sexual uh, standpoint. I'm saying to really get to know a person. You, and, and, and you can be intimate with people at work. You, you know them, you know what they do, you know what they stand for, you know what, what you, how you can count on them to get things done. That's because you know them and, and you work with them and you see them and you can relate. And then, it's, and then there's some that's, that's not pulling their load. You, you'll know them. And so it's important that we, we stand in and, and continue to pray that God will have his way. And, you know, and, and the thing is, sometimes we'll pray a prayer with God, I want you to move and I want you to move now. Well, according by our faith, now faith is. He's, he's moving now. But we may not see it in the natural state until it's actually manifested. Then we see it in the natural state. But until that happens, we just got to keep on praying and just saying to God, God, I thank you for moving. I thank you for having your way. Even though it doesn't, we don't see any, any evidence, I'm believing by faith that it's done, that you're moving. And, and then soon, prayerfully sooner than later, we start seeing something happened. People began to move out. And, and so again, I, I thank and praise God for that, because even as we were all 
kids at one point in time in our life, somebody was standing in the gap for us. Somebody was interceding on our behalf. Somebody was praying that we come to know God as our Lord and Savior. Somebody prayed. And so I'm thankful that they prayed for me. I'm, I'm thankful to God that he, he, he does something on the inside. You know, it, it took some time for me to just to let it go, to give it over to him, but he did it. And so I, so I give him thanks, glory, and honor for doing just what he said he would do. God is not a man he, he could lie. Man can say it and lie today and then take, to say something else tomorrow, but God is true to his word. He, he hastens to perform it on behalf of his people. And, and so we're thankful for that tonight. Any other comments? All right, let's go down to, uh, to Matthew 11, 20, 25, 26. Actually, we'll start at number 20, uh, 25, we're down to 30. I don't have it all, all written here, but it says, let me turn to my Bible here. At the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto base. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. This is really an invitation to come to come to Jesus, to, 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 to realize that we need him. And, and sometime in our, how can I say, in our adulthood, I guess you could say, we, we come to a point to where we analyze the word of, of God. And sometimes we can miss out because we get so, so in tune with well, this, this can't be, and we can miss out. But when you think about a babe, a babe sucks it up. A babe takes it in. They're, they're ready to hear everything that, that you're saying. They're ready to move in. It, you know? and, and so we need to be the same way. We need to take it in. God, show me the things that's, that's hidden to me. Show me those things that I can go forth and be uh, wise and prudent and do the things that, that, that you want me to do as unto babes. Reveal it to me. God wants to reveal. When you think about being revealed, he's letting you know the things that it, you can see it now. You, you saw it, but now you really see it. And then you're walking in the revelation of it because it's, it's been revealed to you. And, and so when you think about the word of God, God has revealed things to us through his word. You go to the book of Revelation. What does it mean? He's re he revealed some things to us in that last book of the Bible, the 66th book. There is something that he wants us to know. So we're not walking uh, un with, without knowledge. He has given us this knowledge as we're reading this where he said, blessed are thou to read this book. He's, he's showing us something. He's letting us in on something. The whole world is not in on that, but we that are in Christ are. And so when we come to him as babes, what he's saying is we're coming to him with this hunger. We're coming to him with this thirst to understand that he is the one that can nurture us to completion. And when I think about Matthew 11, 26, 25 and 26, I also can, can run revert back to, uh, to John chapter 15 where he says, I am the vine and ye are the branches, and we need to stay attached to him. We go to him because he's the one that's given us what we need to be able to be sustained. And it's important that we go to him because he knows everything about us, and he's going to see us through whatever it is that we may be uh, going through. He knows about it, and he can talk to us, and he can help grow us to that point. Understand, we are never at a point where we are totally grown. We are constantly growing. We're constantly learning more about him. God wants us to learn more about him. And, and, and that's, a, it's, that's a, it's a growing thing. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's a constant uh, thing for us. You turn over to uh, 2 Peter for a moment. 2 Peter says that, that we, are to, we are to grow. Uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter says, According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him and have called us to glory and virtue. Verse four says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, Again, we're talking about growing here. He says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. 
He says in verse eight, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking about growth, growth in Christ. These are the things that we need to be endeavoring to do in, in the body of Christ. You know, we want to continue to grow. We're ever learning. We want to come to the knowledge of the truth. We don't want to be like the world ever learning, but never come into the knowledge of the truth. We want to know the truth because it is the truth, as John says, the truth that you know is going to set you free, but you got to know it. And so we thank God that he's revealing these things unto us that we can go forth and, and, and it's good because everything that God does is good. It might not be always good to us at the time. You know, and I'm, what I mean by that is we might be going through a time of suffering. We might be going through a time of chastening, you know, but it's going to be good for us in the end because when we come out of it or whatever we're going through, we have become stronger. We have grown a little bit more. We become wiser according to the things of God. And so, again, it's important that we allow God to reveal to us the things that he wants us to know. And as he reveals it to us, he just he just opens it up. And it's like reading the word of God. You can say, well, I read from Genesis to Revelation. Well, y'all, yeah, many people have done that, but they don't retain all of that in, in one setting of the reading of the Bible. It's so much more that's going to be opened up to, uh, to us as we continue to read it day in and day out. God continues to reveal more to us because we have a desire to want to know more about him. And as we have show him that desire, then he shows us more. And I can say, you go back and read a portion of scripture that you read before. I read it 50 times. And the 51st time, if something came off the page that I didn't see before, God is revealing something more to me. And so this is what it's like as babes, we're, we're going to soak it up. And, and, and in the midst of soaking it up, he's showing us more that will help us to grow and to, uh, to prosper. And any comments on this particular one? Praise for revelation for to babes. Well, God tells us that's how we have to come to him. We can't come knowing anything except Christ and Christ crucified. If we do, then that's where pride and arrogance and all the other stuff, the, the sinful part of us gets in the way of a, a right relationship with God. Amen. Any, any other comments there? You know, when, when I think about a babe, you know, and, and we have children, we, we know, we can tell them things, that they're listening, they want to know as, as they're growing. But as I said, sometimes as we get older, we can start becoming very analytical and, and we try to, try to, we think too much, we think too much on it and we miss out. It's not that hard as we allow God to, uh, to minister his word to us. He, and again, he gives us the understanding. He said, all oh, like getting, getting understanding. So the babes come back to the source. We come back to the source, that being Jesus Christ, as we said in Sunday school on, on Sunday. Jesus, God is our source. All that we need, we can get from him. We don't have to run from man to man, from place to place. We can run directly to God and, and allow him to begin to, to minister on to us. Amen. Okay, and we have to go to another uh, scripture here from John, John chapter 11. And here we're talking about Jesus at Lazarus, at the tomb of Lazarus. And we all know what took place there. And the thing is, is that we realize what has taken place, but others may not. And so it's important for us to share again with others, they, that they may see, their eyes will be open. And in, in chapter 11, verses 41, 42, it says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heardest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou has sent me. Jesus knew his purpose. I'll say it that way. Jesus knew why he came. He came to fulfill the will of his father God. And a lot of things that people around about him did not understand. 
But God prayed, I mean, Christ prayed to his father. He sought God. Many times he went out and said, and he got up early in the morning and he went out to a, to a certain place and he just took the time to pray. He prayed to God. He consulted with him, you know, desiring to know what it was that he would have for him to do at a particular day and time. He, he sought the Father's will, not his own will. And so he surrendered his will to the Father. But he says, and he took away that stone where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. He was saying, Father, I thank thee. You know, he was thanking God for what he did because he knew that his Father heard him. And so when we pray, this is letting us know, that even today, when we pray, we're praying knowing that God hears us and that God is going to respond. And he says, in, in the other part, of course, he says, and I knew that I heard me always. You know, Jesus had a relationship, a genuine relationship with his father. The same type of relationship that we have with our father, our children have with us. It should go even further than that, the relationship we have with Jesus Christ and, and our father God. And so he says, I, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And so sometimes... People need to see something. You know, now, for, for us that are in Christ, if Christ doesn't show us another thing, don't you think he showed, showed us enough in sending forth his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross at Calvary? And, and through his blood, we have the remission of sin. Don't you think that's enough? He don't have to do another thing. But for some, that wasn't enough. And, and I say that because they whipped him, they scourged him, blood was spattered on the pavement. They had no idea. That blood was there for the remission of their sin. They had to see something. When Christ died, the blood was shed. They pierced him in the side. Out came water and blood. And then the skies darkened. The veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Now they seeing something now. They're seeing a sign. And the centurion says, surely this was the man, uh, the son of God. They, they saw something. There was a sign. They recognized that. But if Jesus doesn't do another sign, we know that he is Jesus. We know that he is God. We know that he was sent to save us. Uh, Luke says that. When he's 19 and 10, he came to seek that, to save that which was lost. This is why Jesus came. And so we know that. But there are a lot of people that don't know that. And we were once like them. Never forget that we were once alienated in sin, just like them. But God opened our eyes. We received his word in our heart. And now we belong to him. We are children of the most high God. And so it's important that, that we know that, that we, we share that with others so that they too can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And uh, it's, it's important. So when Jesus raised Lazarus, from the dead. Don't you think that did something to, to people? It, it changed their mindset. It changed their thought process. Who could do this? Who could do such a thing? You know, the, the only bad part that comes out of that was is that Lazarus had to die again. He had to die twice. You know, but by him being raised from the dead, that was a sign for those that didn't believe. So much so that, that they wanted to, to kill him again. Because as a result of him being raised from the dead, people are now flocking to Jesus. They believe in this is the man. This is the son of God. There's something different about this man, Jesus, all because of that sign. And there are still signs that's being uh, done in today's world. If people would really look, there are still signs that we see there today. You know, when he says, I would never flood the earth by, 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 by water, by flood. We, the, the rainbow, that was a promise to us. That's a sign. But for those that don't believe, it's just, they might run from one end to the other and think they're going to get a pot of gold. But we know better. We know what that sign means, to, what it signifies. And so, again, we thank and praise God that our eyes have been opened. We see afar off now the things that God is showing us. We're not just locked into one place. God, by our eyes of faith being open, we see a little bit further. We're starting to see things the way the way God sees things. And we begin, as we pray, we can pray about those things because God has revealed some things to us. And so we can pray a fervent prayer. You know, it don't have to be long. Sometimes it may be a little bit longer than others, Brother Tracy said. 
you know, and it's because our prayer lives have, have, have increased. Our vocabulary has, has increased. We, we know some things. We know more things to pray for. We know more things to pray about. And as God reveals himself to us, he puts in our heart things that we need to be praying for because we don't always know what we should ought to, what we ought to pray for, but God knows. And so it's important that we uh, continue to allow God to open us up and begin to see the things that he is showing each of us as we uh, go forth in, in our prayer time. And as I said, you know, you can pray a prayer and it, and it can be so short, but if it's sincere, it's, it's from the heart, God hears that prayer. But if there is something that you've done, something that's not right, again, if unforgiveness is there, you know, don't let the sun go down before we get that thing right. As uh, Paul says over in Ephesians, get it right. Because again, none of us know when Jesus Christ is going to, to come back, but we do know he's coming back. So it behooves us to be ready when he comes, that we are standing in the gap and doing what we need to be doing as people of God, continuously to, to look to him. And any comments on those portions of verses? What would you think today? You're witnessing to somebody and, and you tell them that Jesus has the power to raise them up from the dead and, and did it. What do you think the impact would be in the world in which we live today if they were to see such a great sign? And I, I'm, I'm saying there are still being signs written, but they don't always see those particular signs. But, but a sign like that, I, I believe that would get a whole bunch of people's attention. You know, I, I really do. But then at the same point in time, you remember what happened when uh, the rich man was in, in hell. And he was saying, send somebody back to talk to my brothers. Send somebody back to them. And, and God says, you know, if, if they're not going to listen to the prophets, why, you know, what's going to make them listen to anybody else that he might send in? When you think about that, what, what does it take? And sometimes what it takes is touching, I say it like this, it's touching home, touching, touching you in, in such a way. You know, and, and I'll say it like this to kind of break it out. In, in our military, if someone dies, it touches all of us because that's our comrade. We, we, we're in this together. But for the rest of the nation, it may not mean a thing to them. It doesn't mean a thing to them unless it's somebody that's in the military that's related maybe to them or a close friend that's, that they know of that has, has passed on, then it touches them. But until it touches them deeply, they don't recognize, they don't recognize it. Well, God has done something great. It, it, it touched him. He sent his son, Jesus. It touches us because we know what Jesus did for us. But it has to touch everybody else just as well. And when they see that, when it touches them, then they really will come to know Jesus Christ. They will recognize that we need Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that to say this, our country, the world, needs Jesus Christ. We have gone so far away from him. We're doing things that seems unseemly, things that we would never have thought could happen or would happen. We're seeing it now. So the things that are happening now, count it not strange, is what Peter said, count it not strange the various things that's going on right now. Don't count it strange. These things are happening right now before our very eyes. Uh, I'm just going to read that scripture out of 1 Peter 4, verse 12. He says, uh, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Which takes us down to this next uh, scripture out of John chapter 12. John chapter 12, I read verse number 28. And it says, uh, This is here, Jesus is praying for the, the, the Father's glory. You know, he says, Father, glorify thy name. 
Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. So he's glorifying his son. You, th you think about uh, what, what God did through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I thank and praise God for Jesus. All of us should be thanking and praising God for what Jesus did. Well, verse 26 says, times verse 28, 28. He says, I'm going to start at verse 23. He says, and Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the son of man shall be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall unto the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where, that where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto the world. And he says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came their voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. So Jesus is teaching here. He's letting his disciples know what the will of the father is. He's letting them know what his purpose is, why he came. And, and, and again, God is being glorified through the son because the son is willing to lay down his life for us. And, and you think about this, scripture says, greater love had no man than this. And he'd be willing to lay down his life. Some would dare to do so, but Jesus did it. He followed through to do the will of his father. And as a result of that, we now have a right to the tree of life because of what Jesus Christ did for us. Any, any comments on this verse of scripture? Amen. Well, I know we all can identify and we thank and praise God for, for Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ coming in and doing what the Father sent him down to do. You know, it had to be done. There was no way for us to make it back to the Father. Again, God created us to praise and worship him. You know, and if we could not get back in and if we could not be reconciled, we would never get back to him. But he made it so by sending forth his son, Jesus. And because of what Jesus did, we can now be reconciled to God if we truly believe in him. If we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, then, then we are where we need to be. God be glorified. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for what you, for what you did, for what you've done for all of us. Jesus made a way. And so again, we go back and say, okay, Jesus was praying to his father. Father. Glorify thy name. You know, he was calling on him to do what needed to be done for, for his glory. You know, and, and then the voice came down. And so it's like, when we pray to God, God is, he's going to be glorified. And we, and we can go back to a portion of scripture when he was talking to Elijah. When Elijah called down fire, he called down the fire. He was talking to God. And God sent down fire and consumed the, the altar, the altar, dust, the water, everything that was at the, at the, at the altar was consumed because God came down, sent down fire, you know, and so we have to recognize just how powerful, how mighty our God is, and, 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 the, and the fact that he is a prayer answering God. When, when you think about all the religions that are in the world today, and I have no idea how many it is, you know, how many numbers, but I, I know it's, it's numerous, but, but there's no God like our God. Our God is God alone. There is none that can compare to him. Our God is, is, is strong. Our God is mighty. You know, and so when you think about other gods of this world, dead in the grave, stones representation or whatever, but they can't do anything. As Elijah said, what, what, what's going on with your God? Why is he not answered? Can he not hear? Is he asleep? You know, he was taunting them because he knew that there was no God like his God, the almighty God. And this is the God in whom we serve. And so we, we just thank him and praise him. And when you think about how he glorified his son, this is my son 
in whom I am well pleased. You know, we want to hear God say that to us as a servant. That I have been faithful over a few things. Come up and I'll make you rule over many. That's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear him say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We, I know you're not. No, that's, that's not what we want to hear. So as we're going forth doing the will and work of the Lord, and we're constantly in contact with our Lord and Savior, we're communing with him through prayer, we're communing with him through his word, he's responding to our call, then we know that we're going to be with him. So again, it's important that we pray. Prayer is a weapon at our disposal. Use it. When the enemy comes up against us, pray. Call on the name of Jesus and watch God respond to the call. That's what he wants to do. He wants us to be as dear children to call upon him as our father. That's what he desires of us to do. So let's not let him down. Let's go to him. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Call upon him and let him know that, that you are serious about him moving on your behalf. And he'll do just that if we would give him place in our lives. So if you say you don't have time to pray, that's the time you need to pray. Make the time, make the time. As Brother Dave said, he's on the road. I'm sure he, he could be praying away on, on the drive. God, Lord, keep me alert, keep me vigilant and, and press on. When you're walking on, on, on the installations, going from job site to job site, going from your job to the dining hall. I mean, there's times, pray. You know, you're not going to be like the ones out there, like the hypocrites out there praying the long just to be seen or heard. No. So it could be a very short prayer. It could be three words. That's the shortest prayer I ever prayed. Lord, have mercy. But God moved. And then there's times when you stay there until you know that you got the response. You got the answer. And when you know you got it, then you get up off of your bended knees. But until you got the, the answer, the response, you can stay there. And you might be there for three or four hours. However long it takes, standing in the gap, interceding. Sometimes you may even take on the attributes of other person that you're praying for. I, I feel what you feel. I'm going through what you're going through. I, I, I can just imagine the pain. You know, you take on that place. That's what Jesus did for us. He took on our pain. He took on our anguish. He took it all to the cross. And so I, so I thank him for it but taking it for me and for you. Any, any comments tonight? All righty. Well, again, as I said last week, I hope this is, is being helpful to each of us as we continue to stand in and praying one for another that God will have his way. And again, there's so many things that we can be praying about. Family members, unsaved, job situations, things that we know to pray for. But there are other things by the Holy Spirit that we need to be praying for and standing the gap for as well, that God will have his way in the midst. I thank God again for your time, for your coming out and being a part of what, what God is doing. And continue to share uh, the site, the, the link, uh, with others that may want to come in and join just to to hear a word or to pray or to be prayed for, to pray with, you know, we want to make ourselves available to the community so that they know that there is a place that they can come in and, and, and allow God to, uh, to do in them what God wants to do for all of us as we continue to, uh, to lift up the name of Jesus. Any other prayer requests before we close out tonight? Amen. Am I still online? Hello? Okay. Hey, okay. clear, Pastor. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're here, <All> Pastor. Right. <laughs> I, I guess yeah. just um, if you pray for just that we'll continue to have obedience, we'll continue to have strength to obey and to and just to hear God's voice. And when mm -hmm. we pray, like you said, to, to listen and not mm -hmm. always talk, but just to really be able to receive God's voice and, and hear him. Amen. Amen. I'm with you on that, Brother Tyler. I, I can tell you. I walked this morning for six miles, and uh, and it was like, I, I, at first I had a, a praise praise on because they had this thing for two hours of praise and worship, and then I just turned it off, and it's and it was just peace, 
okay, God, you know, speak, speak to me. What, what would you have me? You know, I just want to be in the presence of God. It, it was just a, a good feeling, you know, but it, had, but it goes beyond that. It goes, it's, it's, it's comfort, it's joy restored, you know, and through all of that. And so again, I, I thank God for each one of you. Amen. If all hearts, minds are clear, then we'll go ahead and close out with the word of prayer. Father God, again, we come before you. We thank you and we praise you, oh God, for tonight. We pray that something has been said, oh God, through the testimonies of these prayers, God, that will just continue to touch our hearts and we will continue to go boldly for your throne of grace, God, and just let our requests be made known with thanksgiving. God, that you will, will move, that you'll hear our prayers and move on our behalf in Jesus' name. And God, I just pray that we will be obedient, as Brother Tyler mentioned, God, that we'll walk in your obedience, that, that we just continue to, to hear from you, God, and that you will direct our past, God, that we lean on to our own understanding, God, but that we'll acknowledge you, for we know that you shall direct our path. And I just thank you and praise you, God, for this opportunity to gather together in your name. We lift up all the worship services that's taking place in your name, uh, prayer meetings, Bible studies, God, just being able to come together and just to allow you to have your way in our lives. We lift up, oh God, the monthly men's fellowship, the women's fellowship, God. Have your way in the midst. Move by your spirit. Speak a word into each of our hearts, oh God, as we humble ourselves before you. And God, again, I pray for all that are here tonight. I pray, God, that you, you just move upon our family members, God. Have your way with each and every one of them. And Father, as we go back to our various homes, some may be at their jobs, some may be at, at home even now. I pray for a peaceful sleep, a peaceful rest in you tonight, God. And, and I pray that as you quicken us to rise again, that we will rise up giving you glory, honor, and praise that you are deserving of, oh God. Have your way in our lives even the more. Continue to touch our bodies, God. Manifest your healing within us. Be with us on our jobs, God, in the place that we, we free from, God, that we can go forth to be an example of you, an extension of you, an imitator of Christ. And God, we're praying for all on our in our workplaces, God. Be with each and every one of them, God. Be with the students in school, God. Be with those that are traveling to and from by vehicle. God, watch over each one in Jesus' name. Again, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Be blessed. Be blessed.